so it is what it is. No mods. This is the way it would have operated when it was brand new from the factory or when you wired it yourself. Okay, you survived part one. Now we're uh, going to attempt to bring this radio on the air and align it. So uh, going through the circuit uh, very quickly, uh, we should look at the schematic and then we're going to start right in on the alignment of the Heathkit HR-10. Uh-oh, kill me now. He's going to talk about the schematic and the block diagram. Okay, don't worry. We're going to keep this fairly simple. Looking at the block diagram, we have the... Uh, the preamplifier, a 6BZ6. This is a very common tube to use in a high performance uh, communications receiver. It has a high gain or high transconductance, which means it has a low noise resistance. 6EA8 mixer stage is a, uh, a dual tube. It's a pentode and a triode. The pentode is used as a mixer. The uh, triode is used as a local oscillator. Then we go into a half lattice crystal filter, which is just two crystals that are set up in a balanced configuration that give you a fairly symmetrical passband of between 3 and 6 kilohertz wide. The IF amplifier, first IF amplifier is a 6BA6, a very conventional remote cutoff pentode that's uh, easy to control with AGC. Then we go into another uh, double tube, another 6EA8. Uh, which uh, comprises the second IF amplifier. The triode section is working as the BFO. And then uh, we have a 6BJ7 detector, AVC, and automatic noise limiter. It's a triple diode tube. Finally, the audio is a dual tube. Uh, it's a TV set tube. It, it does uh, video amplification. Uh, typically on a TV, but here we're using it as a high mu triode uh, preamplifier and a audio output stage uh, for the speaker and the headphones. The, uh, the rectifier is a conventional full wave uh, 6x4 and uh, produces the, the voltages shown. Okay, here's the schematic, and uh, most of the tubes are conventional, but uh, I do question uh, the, uh, the output tube. It's a little bit oddball, although there are substitutes for that tube that uh, will work successfully. Before we leave the uh, theory portion, uh, I want to talk about uh, 10 and 15 meters and why they're using the local oscillator at half frequency rather than conventional high side. Um, they must have had their reasons. I would think maybe stability by running the LO at half frequency. Maybe they thought the receiver would be more stable. But it turns out to be a design flaw because the second harmonic is just too far down to provide adequate injection for the, uh, for the mixer. Therefore, the sensitivity on 10 and 15 meters on the receiver is markedly down from the other bands. How did they get the tuning rate to work with the same variable capacitors? And the answer is uh, the resonance formula itself solves all the problems. As soon as you adjust the LO for half frequency and uh, get the inductance correctly selected, magically, uh, at the twice the frequency, the scaling remains exactly the same. Okay, let's uh, go over the controls. We're going to put the BFO in the middle. We'll start on band 80. AF gain all the way up, RF gain all the way up, noise limiter is off, AVC is on, BFO, let's turn that on, um, antenna trimmer and uh, cal reset can be in the middle, uh, calibrate, off, standby, receive, let's bring it up, okay, that's 100%, let's let it warm up, uh, the meter is coming up, calibrate, BFO. Ah, the BFO is uh, causing the meter to go up and down. EVC is causing the meter to react. Okay. Ooh, as we adjust the RF gain, the meter goes up and down. Something's not right. We're going to have to do some troubleshooting. So let's take a look at this thing. Now I'm just going to stick my hands in here and get a shock. Okay, that tube's warm, warm. Ooh, 6x4 is very warm. Warm. 6BZ6 RF amp, he's warm. 
warm, warm, ice cold, ice cold. And again, it's that troublesome uh, IF amplifier, the 6BA6 is cold. It's not even lighting up. Okay, we're on the, uh, we're on the tube. Start bringing the voltage up. Oh, dude, it's coming up. That tube has got voltage. Now, if the, if the ground side of the tube is not making contact, it will also be up. So let's look at that. That's here. No, that's ground. So it's a bad tube. Or we're not making contact to the socket. And shame on me, I just grabbed that tube out of my box, did not test it ahead of time. So it could be a bad tube with an open filament, or it could be a socket that needs to be cleaned better. Okay, tube's in the tester. It's good. So, the tube's lighting up in the tester. We must have a problem with that socket. Well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that tube is now lit. So, it definitely was a dirty socket. We hit that with the oxit. Did a little better job, wiggled the tube around a little bit, and now that tube is lit so up. Now we're getting some noise out of it, out of the phone jack, but the speaker jack is intermittent. So we got something going on with this uh, connector. Probably a soldering issue, maybe a connector issue. But we now have some hiss or noise coming out at least. That is absolutely pitiful. So, but it is receiving a CW signal. We've got the speaker working now. And it turned out to be the contact on the phone jack. When you uh, insert it, it hooks you up to the headphones at a reduced level. And when you let it go, the audio is supposed to come out here to the speaker. But that was high impedance. And now we have cleaned that contact and the speaker's working. When these receivers come on the market for low money, repairable, they've usually got some problem that the person that's tried to repair it just gave up on. And it could be something as simple as a dirty contact. So you hear the hum. The receiver definitely can use some improved filtering. So I am going to shotgun out the uh, the capacitors. I'll leave the, uh, the electrolytic in there but disconnected. I've inserted a uh, or installed a terminal strip where we're going to put the new capacitors and I've also put in this new ground lug because I just don't like the way they're grounding the main power transformer. So I made a, a pretty heavy duty uh, lug type ground for that. So next thing you'll see is the capacitors replaced. I'm not going anywhere near the generator or the alignment until we have the receiver somewhat uh, happy with uh, voltages. And I'll be replacing the triple 20 microfarad capacitor with three 33 microfarad 450 volt caps and uh, the one 10 microfarad on the audio output for biasing the, uh, the audio output tube I've got a 22 mic at 250 volts, so shouldn't have to touch that thing ever. Uh, just convenient values. Um, a little bit extra capacitance isn't going to hurt anything. Um, it'll just improve the regulation on the receiver a little bit. Now if you want to go out and, and buy a direct replacement capacitor for this receiver, then uh, people are, are very glad to stuff the cans for you and give you a replacement that will look exactly like the original capacitor in the receiver and uh, here's a vendor that uh, supplies a beautiful recap kit for this receiver. Okay we have the new capacitors installed we have the uh, bypass capacitor on the output and we have the three high voltage capacitors. These replace the uh, the silver triple capacitor that was in the radio originally. Let's see what we can do here. Let's bring it up. Watching the meter as best we can. Okay, here it comes. Voltage is coming up. 
It's always nice to see these capacitors come up. Okay, we're up to 60 volts, 70. I'm starting to hear something out of the speaker even. second. Boy, is it happier. Okay. see that this is a radio that really needed some capacitors. Of course it's drifting, but... I got leaned across the fender and it broke the iPad off. I couldn't find it. Yes. So how do we know if we've got everything ready for alignment? Well, first go through the tubes with your tip of your finger. That's good. If you can go through the tubes and not get any scratchiness, you know that basically all of the sockets are clean. We are ready for alignment. Let's look at our alignment setup. First of all, we have the jumper going from pin 9 of the oscillator portion of the uh, mixer tube to ground, which shuts the oscillator off. We're, we're uh, connected to the speaker. And we also have a connection to the speaker to an RMS voltmeter. Any meter with an AC scale will work here. We have a uh, connection to the antenna input going to the generator that we're going to be using to do the alignment. So I have a counter hooked up to the generator so I can tell what frequency the receiver happens to be set for. So it looks like it's pretty close, 1681. So because there's a crystal filter involved, I am not going to attempt to align it 1682. I'm going to align it where it seems to peak the best. So I'm going to keep it right around 1681.5. So I found the correct tool. I'm going into T3, which is the last IF transformer before the detector. I'm going to peak the meter. Pretty close. Now using this tool, you can reach both the bottom and the top. You don't need to turn the receiver over to do this adjustment. This particular tool, you push it through the first one, which is the bottom, then adjust the, the top, then pull it back through carefully, back through the bottom one, and out. So all the adjustment is done from the bottom of the receiver if you have the correct tool. Okay, next we are going to adjust the PFO. And CW position on the generator. Make sure that the BFO is at 12 o'clock. The BFO capacitor is at 12 o'clock. Now we have to turn the BFO on. Okay, BFO is on. We're going to adjust the BFO coil. Let's try another tool that might be a little bit better. This one's really sticky. Okay, I think we're there. Yeah, and you can see the BFO capacitor. Just about perfect. 
Okay, BFO so After set. going through the alignment procedure three times in a row, we're at around 1681.8. Okay, so the crystals have aged a little bit in the filter and the frequencies dropped just a little bit. It's still within a couple hundred hertz of where we expect the center to be. Okay, the next little thing we're going to try is to uh, set the crystal calibrator. It's a 100 kilohertz calibrator. How do we get that exactly on frequency? Well, we could hook the output into a counter, but that's kind of cheating. Plus the counter, how good is the counter? You don't know that it's exactly right. So we're going to use our friend, the AR3 receiver. It's tuned to WWV, you can hear it in the background, on 10 megahertz. We'll turn the calibrator on. And you're wondering, how did I get the calibrator in this? I took the antenna output, brought it right over to a T, ran the other side of the T into the back of the AR3, and hooked up the antenna. Now the two receivers are sharing the same antenna, and the crystal calibrator is being shared over to the AR3. There we are. We now are exactly at 100 kilohertz. Plus or minus a couple of hertz. All we have to do is zero the meter. So according to the manual, we need to make a short. And this short uh, is going to go into the back of the receiver on the, in the antenna terminal. Let's turn the RF up. The reason we have the short is... Uh, okay, get it? The receiver is very sensitive. <laughs> So you need to short that antenna to make sure there's no signals that are going to mess up the meter setting. So it wants the RF gain fully up. It wants the AVC on. As you can see, the meter moved a little bit. And then we're going to go to the back, and we're going to adjust this pot until we zero the meter. So let's get in there. There we are, done. We've zeroed our meter. So I know this has taken a ridiculously uh, long time to get to, but we're finally ready to do the front end alignment on the receiver. We've got our RMS voltmeter hooked across the speaker output. We have the RF input connected to the RF generator. And we're ready to start the alignment. Okay, um, they're calling for the AF gain to be maximum and the RF gain to be maximum. That's ridiculous. That'll blow us right out of the shack. Turn the BFO off, the noise limiter off, automatic volume control off, and of course we need to be in the receive mode, not standby. The cal and the reset uh, ant uh, antenna trimmer and the cal reset variable both at 12 o'clock right in the middle and uh, I'll have the audio gain at an appropriate level one that the meter can easily read we're going to go through the chart and of course we'll be changing bands and we'll be adjusting coils uh, to get the alignment proper on the dial this is hard to do with the receiver in this mode because I can't see the dial so I'm going to have to flop it around okay, the other the first way. step is to set the generator to 3.5 megahertz and adjust the dial on the receiver to 3.5 megahertz. So we've done that. Turn up the audio and turn the calibrator on. Now we know we're calibrated. Oh wow, look at that. Looks like the counter and WWV even agree. The first adjustment, and again we're on 80 meters. I didn't mention that is L11, uh, a 
the signal, so we got to put a tone on. Ooh, that's going to be loud. Now watch the uh, the meter, which I've got set for the 300 millivolt range. So in the second part of the 80 meter, we turn the dial to 3.75 and the generator to 3.75. And then we look for the signal by adjusting the CAL set. Okay, put the meter at a normal level that you can see. And then we adjust the two coils. So the CAL set is used to make the dial correct. It's all the way at its extreme, so it did tune, but I tell you, it's very close. The way the HR10 maintains its dial accuracy over the, the whole scale is through that set capacitor, the Cal set capacitor and the crystal calibrator. So the crystal calibrator is a very important part of this receiver. I wouldn't own one without having that calibrator. Now since we're at the extreme in the middle of the band, that tells me that the capacitors have aged. So you might want to bias that Cal set instead of being at 12 o'clock during the alignment, maybe set it for 11 o'clock and that might make up the difference and allow you to correctly calibrate over the whole band. So maybe 10 or 11 o'clock instead of 12 o'clock on, on this alignment. So on 40 meters we're going to repeat the process. Cal set is at 12 o'clock. We're going to adjust the second coil in the oscillator deck. And uh, Again at 7.15 we're going to adjust the Cal set. Now this one's better, it's just a little off-center. And we're going to adjust the second coil for max. And the, center, the front middle coil for max. Okay, and 14 megs. Uh, this is the front in that back section. Okay, we're at 15. We're way in the back on the other side. Noticeably lower. Okay, got it. Not as much sensitivity on this band, that's for sure. And now we go to 2125. Again, Cal sat in the middle. Generator 2125. Just here. And here. Not hearing enough. Really deaf on 15 meters. Final band, 28 megahertz. Close enough. And now we go to 29. Just cal. Oops, we gotta go. To, <laughs> I'm sorry, we gotta go to 29. And then we adjust cow. And now we peak the two final coils. It's actually a little more sensitive than 15. So the alignment is complete, and what we learned is that 15 meters is deaf as a doornail.
So upper sideband, the BFO goes to the left. Lower sideband, the BFO goes to the right. So as we tune through the uh, CW band, must be uh, CW sweepstakes going on. Hey, this has been a, uh, a great refurb for this uh, HR10 receiver. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, we've got it back on the air on all bands, and uh, we're starting to use that that old novice band again with slow CW. A lot of fun. The old novice band is active again, just above 7.1 megahertz. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a restoration of the HR10. Um, a lot of fun doing these videos, bringing these old radios back to life.